It's crazy how you can be a grown woman. And certain things will happen that will trigger you and make you feel like you are a little girl all over again. I'm going to be honest. When I was a kid, I had a lot of self-esteem issues. I always felt inferior to people. I was constantly comparing myself. And there was a lot of things that contributed to my self-esteem issues. One of the things that contributed to my self-esteem issues was the fact that my father was in and out of my life. One minute he would be super consistent. And then suddenly after a few months of him being consistent, he would just disappear. And I'm not gonna lie, that used to make me feel less than. It made me feel like I wasn't good enough. You know the scene from Fresh Friends where Will Smith was like, why he don't want me? That's kind of how I used to feel. Classism definitely played a role in my self-esteem issues. Here I was living in the inner city, but the way the school district split up the addresses, I was going to suburban schools. So here I was, broke as fuck on free lunch, but I was going to suburbanized schools with a bunch of white kids, no offense, but a bunch of white kids who were pretty much well off. So even though I didn't know the term classism, I felt it. I had a sense that there was some type of hierarchy. Another factor that played a role in my self-esteem issues, unfortunately, was my mother. She would always tell me that I was beautiful and smart, but I could tell she didn't really believe in me. Like anytime I would express my, you know, dreams and passions to her, she would always just tell me, you need to be realistic. You need to have a plan B. She didn't really encourage me. She didn't really, she didn't give any signs that she believed in me or that she wanted to, you know, invest in me. But I don't even blame her. Cause she was a single mother of three kids and she was young at that. She probably just didn't have the time, money, or resources to invest in me in the first place. I really don't want to demonize my mom because I love my mama to death and we are like this now. But, you know, I do have to share my truth. The other thing that I saw a lot of was lack and limitation. There was a lot of scarcity growing up because like I said, I grew up with a single mother of three kids. So I'm not gonna lie, there was there was a lot of times I would see her stress about money. I would see her stress about how she was gonna pay the bills. That is definitely transferred over to me because I find myself constantly feeling like I'm gonna run out of money, constantly being scared that I'm gonna lose it all. And I have more money saved than I ever have in my life. I'm not rich, but I'm comfortable. But I still don't feel comfortable. I used to always feel like I was a burden to people. Just being in their presence, I felt like I was annoying them. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like that's just attributed to the whole quiet BPD. I talked about it in a previous video. I'm pretty sure I have quiet, borderline personality disorder. It's too much to explain, so if you want to know what that is, just Google it. Yeah, I definitely feel like that's probably played a part in my self-esteem issues too. Since I can remember, I've always tied my self-worth to my achievements. I had this subconscious belief, if I become super successful, if I become super rich and famous, people will finally love me, they'll finally accept me, they'll finally pay attention. And it's so funny because I'm a grown woman. I'm 29 years old, but I still have some of those same feelings I had as a child. You get on fucking YouTube and you see in your recommendations a fucking 22 year old who just bought a fucking mansion. And you're like, damn, what the hell am I doing wrong? And yes, I know comparison is a thief of joy, consciously. But subconsciously, I still have those childhood wounds of classism and feelings of inferiority. Yeah, so social media is a big trigger for me. But I'm gonna have to figure out how to navigate and maneuver that because I'm a fucking artist. I'm a creator. You know, unfortunately, I do have to be active on the devil apps. Um, I actually only have Instagram and TikTok. I recently made a TikTok maybe like a couple months ago. But um, yeah, I deleted my Twitter. I rarely ever use Facebook. 
pretty much the only devil app that I, you know, go back and forth with is Instagram. Yeah, even though I'm a grown ass woman, a lot of those feelings I had as a child, you know, feeling inferior because of classism or daddy issues or simply not having the support and encouragement that I needed. People really underestimate how fragile kids are. Kids are sponges. Whatever you put onto them, whatever you do around them, they are going to absorb that. So you have to be careful. And yeah, long story short, I feel like we are just a bunch of grown ass kids working and paying bills. And I want to give myself credit because I do feel like I've grown so much in the past five years and especially in the past 10 years. I do want to give myself credit because I feel like I've improved a lot, but I know I still have a lot to overcome. So I feel like the next step for me, and I've been talking about this for a while, but I'm not procrastinating anymore. I need therapy. I've done everything else. I've meditated, I've prayed, I've done yoga, I've done psychedelics. I've done almost everything you could think of and all those things have helped. But I feel like the last and final thing that I need to do is therapy. That's the only thing that I haven't done. That's not even to say therapy is going to be the end all be all. Like that's just gonna fix all my problems. I don't believe that at all. But like I've said, I've tried everything else. So I am willing to do whatever, whatever it takes to get my mind right. I'm willing to do it. Like I'm going to put my pride to the side. Cause like I said, I feel like I have a lot of mental blockages that I need to unblock. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, if I just become successful, all my childhood wounds will be healed. All my childhood wounds will just disappear. I'm not foolish enough to believe that. I feel like it's actually the opposite. I feel like if I wanna get to where I wanna go, I need to figure out what's going on up here first. So yeah, this was a really random video. I didn't plan this video out. I just, honestly, I had a very emotional day today. A lot of crying, a lot of praying, a lot of questioning, and you know, just a lot of spiritual stuff going on. So to be honest, this was kind of therapeutic for me. I'm really just trying to open up a conversation. I don't really have any deep advice to give you at the end of the video. I'm sorry if I, you know, disappointed you. But, um, yeah, this is my truth. It's true. I have always lived with a feeling that if my mother gave me away, as I feel anyone would feel uh, if one's mother gave you away, that means that the most important person in the world didn't want you. Whatever the reasons might have been, I think that there are many explanations I can make for my mother giving me away. And I think that even though I have tried to explain within myself as to why she gave me away, I, it's very, it's still very difficult for me to accept it. Of course it is. With a sort of present background, with, with a background in your past, I mean, uh, how do you view the people now that you're at the top and uh, all the sort of fawning admirers? Can you, do you sort of stay within yourself and look at them and think, would you really want to know me if I wasn't Eartha Kitt? Do you have this sort of reserve about meeting people? Yes, I think because of, of fear that you have that whomever comes into your life, you're wondering if they really like you enough not to give you away even after they get to know you yes so you're constantly uh, aware of the possibility of even as a public that one day they will they will give you away too